In 2004, Hillcrest Labs created a new TV experience. Known today as the Smart TV, Hillcrest defined a holistic system design that included the remote control, human interaction, and the user interface that would provide access to the huge array of content available on TV today. Presented here with narration by Hillcrest founder and CEO Dan Simpkins is the original home interface. The design concepts and implementations provide a unique insight into the early days of interactive TV as well as highlight opportunities for new user experiences in the living room today. Our objective was to build an interface, an interaction design based on pointing that would support a wide range of applications. Um, really any applications at that time that we could imagine on TV, but as in any interaction design, if you generalize that design well enough, um, as we've learned with modern uh, tablets and smartphones, you can build hundreds and thousands of applications. One of the very first applications we built, actually the very first application we built to demonstrate that pointing on television was an ideal way to control interactive television was on demand. The idea was to zoom into an experience, a visual experience, that would present a set of, um, of options. Uh, here we show um, four major options. It turns out in these um, specific categories, it's really duplications um, of one of our other applications. Um, we have an example here of a video on demand application for cable. This was um, specifically oriented towards Showtime, a set of specific um, categories um, and content in visual directories underneath that category. And one of the neat things about um, our applications um, is you could always go up a level, um, so it's very easy to jump up through levels of our hierarchy in this interaction design. Um, we had an application called Movies Online where we took a popular um, video site on the web and we took that um, same metadata and turned it into a visual experience um, that is ideal for television within, um, within our video environment. Um, here we have content on our home screen, which some of it is actually is active and selectable um, selectable, and we also have the ability to zoom in um, and and see more details, um, a broader, uh, a more specific category. Um, I can continue to zoom in and continue to get um, additional information. I also have the ability to browse through different categories. I could browse by title, and so now you have a very broad um, experience. You have a wide range of content that is alphabetical. You also saw that if I want to go through this quickly, I use this nice blur effect, which enables me to jump ahead in content without actually having to know all of the content. This is a powerful um, interaction method that we use in virtually all of our visual directories. Um, I can move also do by category. So instead of alphabetical, you see these various um, categories. And if I go into cartoons, I can get more details, but then using this arrow, I get the entire category presented to me, um, large amount of content. And so one of the nice things about this experience is it's easy for me to go into a category. Let's go back. It's easy for me to go into a category and essentially browse for a large library of content, really with simple point and click ease, but all oriented towards presenting content right out of the gate, um, easy access um, to a specific content that has been selected or enable browsing of content uh, through visual libraries. What I want to do now is show you one specific application that has been built out. Um, it's a video on demand application uh, with custom content, we call it Hillcrest Movies. Um, as you can see here, we give you an example of a visual directory that has over a hundred movies on the screen 
simultaneously. Now, um, clearly, you can't recognize um, all of these uh, movies. You can't necessarily find a specific movie. But what's fascinating in this is that even in the context of a category, a genre, you see that action is kind of dark and you see flames and, and bold um, fonts and um, comedies as much lighter. And so one of the things that we found with the use of visual directories is even with a quick look, family movies all have bright colors. Um, it's easy to go in um, and have presented to you content categories that are interesting, that, that are easily detectable. Um, in some cases, you might recognize Eddie Murphy, um, or you might um, recognize uh, a um, Finding Nemo or, or Ice Age um, or Spider-Man because of a specific image you see. And that enables you to figure out that you want to go into that category. But in this case, you say, you know what, I quickly, I'm, I'm in the mood for an action movie. I can zoom into that category. Now I can hover over individual movies. I can pull them toward you to tell you that that's something that's selectable. I can drill into a movie, get additional information, um, quickly find out what the rating is, a uh, quick description. I can change which mode, whether it's widescreen or standard definition. Um, and I can get additional information. In this case, Arnold Schwarzenegger is also in another movie I have in my library. So I, I can immediately link uh, to other content uh, directly from within this detail. If I click on this, I actually zoom up and zoom over, and I, um, I'm taken right to that content. And the same thing is, um, can be done with, um, with relationships, with recommendation engines. So here I have related movies. Some of them I know that are in my library. Uh, I also have music. So this is one of the first applications that we showed where we presented content that is cross-category. And what we're going to show shortly is a really interesting approach towards connecting applications together, something that um, virtually no one else has done. Um, they, no one else did it before, and really um, in, there are very few instances of it having been done up to this point. So here I see Apollo 13. Again, I can zoom in. I could zoom out. Um, I could look at who's starring. I could find out that there may be um, other movies that are related. Um, I can also get recommendations. Um, I can cross genres and go to Toy Story. I could actually go up to the broad categories and start over again. Decide that I didn't like my path, find Spider-Man, look for a recommendation, have my uh, wife say, ah, uh, I always wanted to see The English Patient. I heard it was a great movie. Go over to The English Patient, see that, get more information. My daughter says, oh, I don't want to watch this. It's R-rated. I'm not allowed. I'm underage. Okay, let's see what else we got. Ah, interesting. Finding Nemo. Now, you might ask how those are coupled, and, and often it relates to some connection, like a, an actor who's in both. Um, but here we have Finding Nemo. And you know what? By the time we've browsed through, we, we realize that we don't have enough time to watch the whole movie, um, but we see a recommended soundtrack. And we said, you know what, let's listen to the music. And I actually zoom up and over, um, and I took myself out of the movie application into the music application. By the way, if I want to go back, um, I can actually go right back to the movie application and continue to browse movies. So by pushing the right mouse button, um, that's the back operation. I'm pushing the left mouse button uh, to make selections. Um, at any given point, I could watch the content, I could see a preview, and, um, and certainly all within, um, the, you know, w with this very simple point-and-click ease.